welcome to the vlog or welcome back to the vlog. Today we are starting our Christmas decorations, starting with decorating the big wreaths that we are going to put outside on the peaks of our house. So I've got one wreath kind of in place. We kind of decorated it a little live, um, a little live. We've decorated it a little bit live on TikTok, but today I want to finalize that design, show you where it's going to go, and show you the pieces that I'm going to use and how I decorate my wreaths to make them really full, make a really nice, um, glammy but classic look that is going to go outside for our house. So if you want to know how you can DIY your own wreath to go outside, stick around for today's video because it is going to be a ball. If you're new to the channel, my name is Kay and this channel is designed all around the stuff that we do at the house. We started it because we were building our home and now that we're in, we're customizing it. And now that we are in the holiday seasons, we are decorating for the holidays. So my goal is to be completely finished with all of my Christmas decor by the middle of November so that I can kick back, do Thanksgiving recipes, do shopping vlogs, all that good stuff to help us get ready for Christmas. So if you want to learn more about my, me and my family, it's myself, my husband, and my four amazing kids, be sure to connect with us over on Instagram and on TikTok. I go live on TikTok three days out of the week. I'll leave the schedule down in the description below. And if you see anything that you possibly might want to shop for yourself, be sure you check us out on um, our LTK page because I try to link everything there. And if I can't link it through reward style, then I always leave the links down in the description. All right, that's it for today's intro. Let's hop into getting these reefs decorated. Uh, but first, let me show you where they're gonna go. All right, so before we hop into actually doing the decorations for the wreaths, let's go outside and talk about where they're going to go. I've got two peaks in my house that we're going to put these big wreaths on. And I wanna talk with you quickly about sizing and placement, and then we'll come back and look at the decor and I'll explain why I kind of picked what I picked based on that. So when it comes down to choosing the size for your wreath, especially when it's outside, it really depends on where you're gonna put it. So for me, um, here, let me put some shoes on because it's been raining outside. Sorry if it's dark, my bad. So for me, my peaks are pretty high. So because my peaks are pretty high, I wanted to make sure that I have a wreath that is big enough to stand out and make a big impact because that's the whole goal. Now, I say all of that and I want you to know that the reefs that I've chosen are still too small, but um, depending on your budget and depending on availability, you may or may not be able to get a reef the size that you want, but let me show you what I mean. All right, so the first peak is right here over the window and then the second peak is right there over that window. So we've got two wreaths and these wreaths are actually going to act like, more like, um, more like cousins than they are sisters. And you'll exp I'll explain that in just a second. But I got 48 inch reefs and I found my reefs. I'll link below where I got mine from. But I honestly, because of where they're placed, I could probably go just a tad bit bigger. So if I were doing the reefs, say, here, let me give you a window view, hold tight. So, especially up here, we're gonna take a chance on it this year, but I think the 48 inch wreath is specifically gonna be too small for here. We did it in that peak last year and it was fine, but because this one is so high up, I'm sure that thing is probably, I don't know, 50, 60 feet in the air. You really gotta make a big statement and I'm hoping that the reef kind of takes up, ooh, it's going blurry, kind of takes up all of that space 
right there because if not, it's gonna look small. We're taking a risk this year um, just to see how it works. If it doesn't work, it'll be fine. It'll be cute for this year. Or I may have him bring it down and put it over this window right here because I know it'll work there. But for the sake of symmetry, we're pushing to go into the peaks because that's where I want it. And if it don't work out this year, then we'll try it again next year. Um, the only reason why <laughs> I did not go bigger this year is because um, I already had a 48 inch wreath and it, it worked for where it was and I wanted to do them the same size. And budget wise, these wreaths were easy to get to, they were accessible and they were inexpensive versus the bigger wreaths costing a few hundred dollars that I wanted to allocate towards other stuff that's gonna go in the yard. So we're gonna test it, see how it works. If it works, then great. And if it doesn't, it's still gonna be cute. We're still gonna put it up and act like it does. And next year uh, we'll do something different. So now that we talked about size and placement, let me show you the actual reefs um, and what we decorated when we were live over on TikTok. All right, so a couple of nights ago, I went live on TikTok and I kind of just placed the elements in the wreath for now because I wanted to see how it would look. Now I gotta do this today because the installer is going to be here tomorrow to put this all together. But as you can see, this wreath is nice and full. Now I say they're gonna be cousins, not sisters, because some of this stuff I had from last year like this, I can't find in the store. So I am going to have to improvise with say something like a red velvet bow and try to make it look similar, but they won't be identical. They'll be so high up in the sky <laughs> that I feel like it won't matter. But for me, when I'm decorating wreaths that are going in the peaks like that, I like to make them, I either like to go extremely overboard, kind of like what we have here where there's stuff everywhere, or I like to go extremely minimal, um, with like just a big bow or something to make the biggest impact. So none of this is uh, glued into place. It's just kind of sitting as a placeholder right now. Before I start gluing into place, I'm going to show you, because this is a matter of maybe four different types, four to five different types of elements that are on there that kind of achieve this look. So I want to show you what those elements are. And then after I show you what the elements are, we will place this other one, make sure we're happy with it, and then start gluing it down. And I'll come back and show you the finished look for the actual reef. So let me change back to the big camera and show you what we're designing with. All right, so when it comes to actually getting her decorated, there are a number of pieces that have to come together as far as decorations are concerned in order to get this full look. So the one we did on TikTok, I used all things that I had from last year and it is actually exactly like I wanted it. So I went shopping for a little bit to try to find all of the elements. So I'm gonna show you the pieces that I got. Um, I was not able to find one of the pieces, but that's okay. We're gonna mix it up a little bit. So the one we did on TikTok Live will be slightly different just so I can make these girls twinsies and not first cousins, <laughs> if that makes sense. So uh, I think in total, we probably have like seven or eight different elements that we put on it, that I put on it, to make it look like really big and full. Because I'm so nervous about the 48 inches not being big enough, I really wanna make sure they got enough stuff on them. So even if it's slightly small as far as scale is concerned, because I couldn't get up there and measure the distance between the peak and the window, um, it'll be so full that it'll still have an impact, especially up in this higher peak. So let me show you what I got. So this year, um, you will see bells throughout a number of my designs. So we got some bells and the bells are actually going to serve as like the focal point. So we'll have three 
they're kind of noisy right now, but they'll kind of be like this. And this will be like kind of the, the one thing in the reef that kind of just stands out and everything else kind of just pulls around it. So I know usually you'll see vintage bells with like very minimal stuff, but I'm kind of taking that vintage look and pulling it in with a whole lot of glammy stuff um, to really pack a powerful punch. So the way I choose my picks, because I use picks a lot when I am designing wreaths and garlands and stuff like that, is I try to find picks that I could put together and it would look like a really pretty flower bouquet, if that makes sense. So I've got a, I've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different picks that I put together. And when I'm choosing them, I, I get my color scheme first. I always add an additional green pick with, that has a couple of different types of greenery on it. This that you see is on here from last year. I'm gonna be pulling those off. Um, but I try to pick a green pick that has a couple of different types of greenery on it just to fill in and add some dimension to the wreath with different layers of green. And then my other picks, I try to put together in a cluster and see how I like them together. And if I feel like I could put this in a vase and it could stand on its own, then I go for it because my wreath, I consider nothing more than just like a big flower arrangement. And I just wanna make sure all of these play well together. So we actually have eight different picks because this particular pick, I really like looking for picks like this that have a variety of different textures in themselves because usually when I can find picks like this, I can decorate with less picks. This pick is the only pick that I have not been able to find anywhere. I got it from at home. I went to at home to see if they had it. The one that I went to didn't have it. I'm sure it's not in stock, but it's so pretty. It's got the feather feel. It's got this dried flower feel with like some little grass spike looks. So since I couldn't find that one, we're gonna have to adjust just a little bit and we're gonna add this to the mix. So in total, we'll have about eight different textures on top of the garland and then we'll fill it, or I'm sorry, on top of the wreath and then we'll fill it with, um, we'll fill it with ornaments to kind of, when the sun's hitting, create that light flash effect. So in total, this is what we're gonna be looking like. Got a splash of white, we got some gold, and then mostly red, and then we'll add like different types of ornaments and stuff that you would put on a tree just to just to add a little spice to it. So now that you know what I'm using, I'm going to show you on the wreath that's already placed, how I kind of place them, then we'll come back. I'm gonna make this one look like that one. Then we'll come back once we have everything in place, we like it, we'll glue it in place, zip tie in some instances, um, and we'll be ready to go. So I'll show you on the one that's not designed, how I put everything together, but we gotta make this quick adjustment on the one that's laying on the table just to make sure this piece we bought today is going to work. So let's do that first. Uh, I feel like it's gonna be a win, but let's just make sure, and then we'll put everything together in the other one. All right, so the place in question that we're having to replace, I'm thinking is going to be right here. So I am going to remove this. And you see how when I remove it, it creates this um, green space. Here, let me show you. I wanna really show you the power of having um, an element that has so much texture and so much layers on it. You see how just by removing that one piece here, I'm gonna put it back and I want you to see the difference. So you see how me having this right here kind of spreading it all over the place. You see how that one piece kind of just takes up so much green space. So I was really disappointed when I couldn't find it 
because I'm gonna have to steal <laughs> a couple of these from this reef to put on the other one. But I'm thinking that because this pick is so full that it will give the same effect. So let's stick it in there and see if she does. The goal is to not have a lot of green space showing and to be able to then go and manipulate the pick inside of the wreath where the pick is free flowing in some instances, but the greenery of the wreath kind of weaves in there, creating this really layered look. And I think that that makes a big statement and we're gonna be able to accomplish what I set out to do. Let me do the same on the other side. And I think we have our resolve. Oh yay, I'm so happy because I was so concerned. So let me move that one. See how this, we want right here, same effect. Just layer it in. Just lay it in. And I intentionally did not glue this in the other night because I wanted to make sure that the girls were going to look as similar as possible. And I'm glad I didn't because I didn't count before I went live. I just kind of, and I always do that. I wasn't sure of the direction that I was going to go because I kind of went in this direction last year and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do something else. So I had some pieces in place that I had tried that didn't work out, so we ended up back here. But I'm actually okay with the outcome, even with having to add this different texture in and losing a little of the feather. So there's two points on the wreath. My whole goal is just to make things as symmetrical as possible. And I know this is a little hard to see just because it's laying down and there's so much going on in the background. But I think, I think we're gonna be okay. So here, let me see if I can get just a tad bit higher so you can see from up top. But I think, I think this is gonna be okay. It looks okay. I'm gonna do a top shot with my phone just to make sure, just to make sure. So we got gold glitter, because I like glitter everywhere. We got gold glitter poinsettias, white poinsettias. We got cranberries, sprays. We got, I don't know what you call these, but they are nice and full. And I think they were the right move. Yep, that's gonna be, and it might look busy from here, but trust me, when it gets up in the sky, you, you need, especially when we're going this tall, if you want to make a busy statement, you gotta fill it up, because elsewise it's gonna fall flat, because it's so high, and when things go so high in the air, they lose their scale to your eye. So you gotta bring the heat, boo. You gotta bring the heat. I think that it's going to be good. This still flows with the red that is up here. And I think we're gonna be in good shape. Let's do a top shot real quick. Baby, I will show you how you can catch my vibe And right away I saw much time Looping in the blurry lights
So now that all of the picks are in, I know it's a lot of picks, but when they're placed a certain way, that's why I kind of took my time and did this one. When they're placed like this, they fill up a lot of space. So now I'm happy with it. They look like twins. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hot glue gun and my zip ties. For heavy stuff like the bells, these get zip tied to the anchor to the green wire that is the base of the garland. For my picks, I try to go underneath there and wrap them around the base. If I can't wrap it around the base, I'll dot it with glue. I try to use the green framing of the, the wreath as much as I can. That way at the end of the season, all I have to do is unwind it, straighten them out, flatten them out, store them. With glue, you kind of have to pull stuff off, which pulls off the greenery, which, you know, depending on your style and how full you want it, that may not be an issue for you. But I try to use the base of the garland, or I keep saying garland, of the wreath as much as possible so that I can anchor it to the base. And anchoring it to the base kind of ensures that if it rains or anything like that, it's kind of, it's in there, like it can't go nowhere. So I'm gonna do that off camera, kind of get everything attached and then once everything is attached I got one more step to do and it's lighting uh, last year we didn't add lighting so it's very beautiful during the day but I want it to be lit at night as well so while I don't want it to be like C9 lights right I just got these little micro dot lights a 20 count and I'm just gonna stream it. it's two of them so I'm just gonna stream them on each side just to give it a little illumination just on top of what's going on for the nighttime. I don't want it to be like boom but I do want it to show up so that you can see the design of it at night as well. So the first thing though is getting all of this stuff attached and then once it's attached I'll come back wire it in with lighting then I'll pick it up so that you can see it and we will be all done. I don't know if you'll get to see these installed today or not because my light person is coming literally the morning that this video is going to be released. If I have enough time to catch a quick day shot after they're up, I will so you can see it. But if not, when we do like our front door uh, next week, I'll do a pan over and show you what it looks like. So let me hook this up real quick. I'm going to come back after I've hooked everything up and then we'll wire it down. I'll show you the final look. And then if you see much time after that part of the video, you'll know that there's actually, um, I might just, you know what? Don't even worry about it. We'll save the reveal on the house for next week when we do the outside porch, because we're gonna do some fun stuff out there this year. We can see it then. When we come back, after we wire it down, I'll show you the final look. And then, you know, we'll chit chat a little bit and we'll be done. So let me get in here and get this done and I'll be right back. All right now. So this is what it looks like. All finished up. Hopefully you can see it. I'm gonna do some B-roll. I'm coming, Summer. Put it on there, baby. You can do it. It'll be okay. Mommy will clean it up if you make it messy. Hopefully you can see her in all of her glory and it's not too dark, but this is what it looks like. So when we anchor it, and I'll do the testing, little test buttons on the lights. I still need to add the battery pack. <laughs> Let me see, can I push them both at the same time? Probably not. <laughs> Let me see. All right. So when I get it anchored to the house, he's gonna zip tie it at three different points. Then we'll come in and do some final fluffing, make sure stuff is finally symmetrical. But this is what they both look like. Good and busy, good and full, a little bit of light. That should make a big impact at night. And this will allow us to make a huge impact in the peaks of the house, just to add some layer and dimension to the front of the house. So what do you think? I'm so excited. I can't wait till they get put up. Uh, when we do the outside decorations, I'll give you a final look 
of what everything looks like, but here we are, folks. She is all set and ready to go, my friends. Thanks for hanging out. I hope this inspired you to go out and make your own jumbo wreath, or even if you make one that's small for the house. Hopefully some of my pointers today will help you bring together something really, really beautiful that you can enjoy for the holidays. Can't wait to see you in next week's video. Bye.